Okay, we're going to start our notes for lesson 8.4, which is the volume of rectangular prisms. And just a reminder that volume is three-dimensional space inside a solid, okay? So if I have this huge cube and I wanted to figure out its volume, I would find its length, width, and the height, and I would multiply those three um, dimensions together. So in this particular solid, I would multiply 10 by 10 by 10 to get a thousand cubic units. And so what that means is that there would be a thousand of these little guys inside the solid if I were to take it apart and see how many cubic units there were, okay? So that's what volume is. Um, we're gonna be working on volume of rectangular prisms and um, you can see over here a little picture of one. Um, and I think you guys are most commonly used to the formula length times width times height that you used in elementary school. And over here, I just want you to write down a couple reminders that volume is measured in cubic units. Okay. And that in any kind of prism, the volume is um, represented by this formula. Obviously this means volume. And when you're looking at a prism, this big B is area of the base. And then the H is the height of the prism. And the reason that length times width times height works is because this right here is how you would find the area of the base, length times width, multiplied by the height of the prism, okay? And so that's the formula that we'll be using to calculate volume. So this first one is a good opportunity to review a little bit of fractions, okay? I can see my three dimensions. I have my length, width, and height of this rectangular prism, so I'm first gonna write my formula. Always write your formula first, then replace variables with their values. Okay, and remember you can cross cancel. You would look for a numerator and denominator across from each other that you could simplify ahead of time. I'm going to divide both of these by two, and that helps out a little bit. Then go ahead and multiply the numerators. Five times one times one is five. And six times one times three is 18. And that would be meters cubed, okay? And the reason that it's cubic meters is we did meters times meters times meters, which is meters to the third power. All right, let's take a look at this one. What I like about this one is you have to look really carefully to see what the dimensions are, okay? This is the easiest right here. I can see the height is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, look really carefully. How wide is this? Look at yours. You should see there's one, two, three, four, plus there's one right there that you don't see super well, but it's there. And then it's one, two, three, this direction. Then go ahead and write your formula. Volume is length times width times height. And just put in your dimensions. Five times three is 15. And 15 times seven is 105 cubic units. Okay, good so far. Down here we have a problem involving two different fish tanks. It says at the pet shop, Jessica is having trouble finding a fish tank. Her mother said that she needs a tank that has a volume of 24 cubic feet. Which tank should Jessica buy and show work to prove your answer? So if we take a look at these two tanks, we wanna see how much water they're gonna hold. That's what the volume would tell us. And so always organize your work. So I'm gonna Put tank A and tank B. OK, 
Okay, and then just, you know, do one at a time. Let's find the volume of the first tank. And I can see that it has dimensions of five, two, and three. So I would put in those dimensions. Notice that my work is going um, vertically. Five times two is 10, and 10 times three is 30. So tank A has a volume of 30 cubic feet. Okay, let's look at tank two, or tank B rather. It's a rectangular prism, so volume is length times width times height. Put in the dimensions, and if you come back to the picture, you can see it's three by two by four. So you have six times four, which is 24 cubic feet. Okay, so then in answer to the question, which says which tank should Jessica buy, um, you would just write that Jessica should buy tank B. Okay, because it matches the dimensions that her mother wants for volume, and um, the other one would be too big of a tank. Okay, holds too much water. All right, let's go on to the next page. Um, these problems are kind of fun because you're already given the volume up here, and then what you're trying to solve for is how high um, the rectangular prism would be if it had that particular volume. So kind of, you know, a little bit of a twist on that formula that we're gonna be using. Okay, so it's a rectangular prism, so I know that volume is length times width times height. And remember, our second step after writing a formula is to replace variables with their values. And then I can't do anything over here on this side yet, but I can do three times seven, which is 21. So I have 231 equals 28H. And then I'm just gonna use the division property of equality. I'm gonna divide both sides by 21. And then that, once you calculate it, is 11. So up here, I know that it's 11 inches, that missing side. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This one, we don't know the width on there. So my first step is to write the formula. Second step is to replace variables with their values. And I'm gonna rearrange these. These are all factors, so I can rearrange them um, using commutative and associative properties so that my variable's over here on the end. So I have 6,400 is equal to 400 times W. And again, you're gonna use your division property of equality, dividing both sides by 400 so that you can isolate the variable. W is equal to 16. So 16 meters is the missing dimension. Okay.